channel. My name is Gerard Younger. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you all the process of connecting your iPad as a secondary monitor to your MacBook. So if you have both devices and you're interested in knowing how to set that up, I'll show you right here in this video. Let's get into it. In this demonstration, I'm going to be using an iPad Air 4th generation and a MacBook Pro M2 Max but there are minimum requirements that you have to meet with your devices in order to be able to use this feature. So I'm just gonna have this on screen so that you can take a quick look to see if your devices are compatible. Do note this utilizes a feature that Apple calls Sidecar, and basically this is what your Apple devices have to support in order for this function to work. Now, if your Apple device is on this list, along with the compatible operating system, perfect. We can move on to step number two which is making sure that both devices are signed into with the same Apple ID. If one is signed into with a different Apple ID than the other, this will not work. So you have to make sure that you're on the same account on both devices. After you've confirmed that both devices are signed into with the same Apple ID account using two-factor authentication, then you can move on to step number three. For step three, you wanna make sure that both devices have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled and you also want to make sure that both devices are signed into the same Wi-Fi network. And according to Apple, you do not want to be sharing the cellular connection on the iPad or the Mac's internet connection when using this feature. Lastly, for the last step, step four, you have to enable handoff. For most Apple devices, you can find that setting under system settings, general, airdrop, and handoff and you'll see handoff as an option to enable. You just enable it. Or it may show as allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. You would enable that. Now, if you've completed each step correctly, you just wanna head over to your MacBook, have your iPad within 30 feet of it. Any further, you might have connection issues or just won't connect at all. Go to the upper right of the mini bar on the MacBook, go to control center, select screen mirroring, and you should see your iPad as an option to select. If you do, click it. And once you do that, if you wanna have it as a separate display, make sure you use, uh, use a separate display and that'll have it as a separate monitor from your MacBook to use together. In this section, I just wanna run through a couple of sidecar settings that are available in Mac OS. So to jump right into it, we would wanna to get to display settings. The way that I would get there is just go to control center, screen mirroring, display settings, and that brings up the display settings window. From here, I would select iPad to make sure that I'm configuring the options for the iPad. The first important thing I would suggest taking a look at is a range. This allows you to arrange the monitor or the iPad correctly. So if you have it on the right, if you have it on the left, you can arrange it from here by clicking and holding and then dragging it to the right side that you should have it on. Once you do, I have mine on the right, you hit done and that applies the arrangement. Next thing is use as, this basically allows you to change how you would use your iPad as a separate display. You can extend, which is just using it as a, a separate display. You can have it as the main display or you can have it to mirror a built-in display or a connected display. Next option is sidebar. Not gonna dive too deep into that, but that's just allowing touch functionality during sidecar because sidecar does not allow touch functionality. You can't like just do a finger touch on type in the menu bar or select or anything in the menu bar. You can only use your Apple pen to do that. So you can click on those items using the um, Apple uh, pen if you have it. But if you don't, you can enable sidebar and that gives you quick uh, touch options that you can access. So you get command, you get option, you get control, you get the uh, shift key to touch, you get the undo button, you get a keyboard, you get the option to hide the mini bar in a full window mode or um, show it. You have the option to show the dock. So if you click that, that shows the dock. You can unhide it and hide it with that. And then the very last icon is to disconnect from the side, bar, uh, the side car session. And that'll just take you back to the iPad home. And if you head back to the MacBook, I'm gonna show you, I typically just set the sidebar to never, and then I turn off show touch bar, which shows a touch bar area on the iPad. 
because those two take up real estate and I want to have maximum real estate that is available. So I just turn those two off to get maximum real estate during sidecar. Uh, next thing is you can enable double tap for the Apple Pencil. If you go to advance, you get additional options. Um, I leave everything the same here, except for push through the edge of a display to connect a nearby Mac or iPad, because that triggers uh, something called universe control. And that disables sidecar if you accidentally enable that. So I just turned that feature off and I hit done. And that's pretty much everything that I have set when I have sidecar, uh, sidecar enabled. So some additional things to note is that you can utilize this over a USB connection. So you can have your iPad wired directly to your Mac and you can utilize sidecar that way, presumably for a more reliable, stable connection. But another benefit is when you have it directly connected, you'll be able to simultaneously charge your iPad during when it's connected as a separate display to your Mac. Also to circle back to touch features. So with inside car, you can't use single touch gestures. However, you do have the option for multi-touch gestures. So basically for scrolling, copy and pasting and redoing, undoing, you do have that ability with multi-touch gesture. But if you're looking to use your finger in place of a mouse to touch on the application items or menu items, that will not work. But if you want to use something other than your mouse, you could use your Apple Pen to, to click on items. Another thing I want to bring up to note is that Sidecar is an actual app on the iPad. It shows up as something called continuity that you can minimize or suspend to open up iPad apps to work in them if you need to. And then if you want to switch back, you just reopen up the continuity app to reestablish that connection to your Mac. The last feature I want to mention is a little bit handy, and it would be if you hover over a full screen button on a window, it gives you the option to move it to your iPad. You can also use this to move windows from your iPad to your Mac, but essentially it saves you a bit of time dragging windows to and from your iPad. For me, I do photography on the side, and so I tend to edit a lot of photos. And when I'm not home in front of my desktop computer as a portable option, I would use my MacBook Pro M2 and the iPad as what I would consider a portable desktop multi-monitor configuration. And I think that's as good as it gets for me for a portable solution. Now this functionality is not perfect. It has its hiccups, however, it works reliably enough in order for me to want to use it. If you have a MacBook and an iPad already, and you're looking for a portable solution to use, definitely give this a try as it would absolutely help to increase your productivity. All right, that's all I got for today's video. If you stayed up until this point, thank you. These videos take a lot of time and effort to make, so I very much appreciate you for staying this long to watch. If you have any comments, questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you found this video to be helpful, leave a like, and if you want to see any future content from me, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.